All right. Let's see what we got. Uh, we're going to go over and just do keep. And so we're going to set up Mesa. And this is Ubuntu based. So uh, this is actually Linux Mint, right? Yeah, it's Linux Mint. So this is where we're, we're starting with. Starting with the generic 5.4 kernel. Um, we did a rebuild, what was it last week, guys? Or was that two weeks ago? I don't know. Um, but we ditched Ubuntu, switched over to Linux Mint. So we'll, we're gonna do some some cool stuff with that. Um, but we'll start with just doing Mesa. Oh, and we're gonna switch over to a custom kernel as well. Oh, what, what custom kernel did I do? Zen mod. Or Zan mod. Ah. Is it Zan mod? Yeah, Zan mod. Zen mod. <laughs> Got AMD on the mind. All right. So let's uh let's go here. We're going to grab this custom. A lot of people don't understand like when it comes to Mesa and ACO um getting the newest Mesa drivers on like an Ubuntu or Linux Mint or Pop OS, all these instructions are really based on this. When I did my Mesa ACO video, I was using Fedora where I was using the uh, repositories over there because um, Glorious Egg Roll, who creates a custom Proton, has a custom repository that makes it very, very easy to use the latest Mesa with ACO and all that. So we're gonna first get Mesa and then we can actually set this right here, this rad perf ACO to enable ACO and we might just do this globally. We might just edit ETC environment and just toss that in there or, or add like an export RAV per test uh, equals ACO to uh, the profile to make it just universal. So uh, yeah, and we're also gonna custom, do a custom uh, Proton too. So let's get going because what, what are we about? Oh, we're already 30 minutes into the stream. We only got 30 minutes to do all this. So let's get going on installing this so we're gonna first add this ppa right here we're gonna grab this ppa we're gonna just go ahead drop that into here and hit enter to that and then just apt uh, update or upgrade uh, update All right, so that grabs that. So we've got our custom PPA in. This is gonna grab the latest and greatest Mesa. Uh, the reason why I use this one, there's a lot of Mesa PPAs, but uh, probably, probably something funny, just most PPAs are run by like Ubuntu or, or that uh, canonical team. And a lot of them honestly are completely blank with nothing in them or they're using old uh, packages. So I usually come into like launchpad.net and say, hey, is this a current repo? Is there packages in here? And as you can see, they're they're very, very recent. Some as early as what, the eighth? That was yesterday, right? Or not two days ago. So yeah, we have the Mesa 20.1 on this repo. So from there, let's go ahead and do Xanmod. So let's uh let's take a look. Xanmod.org is what we need. And I'm going to fill this out. I will make a how-to article and a video after this, but we're just going to do it live for now. So for Xanmod, we want a couple options here. We can go real time. If you're doing like video or video production or audio editing, you probably want a real time kernel. You can do that. Um, or you can go LTS or stable. I like to do stable. So let's go ahead, open that up. Uh, so we'll do seven. Ooh, stall. Here we go. I wish this. Uh, I might actually just copy these directories because I I do a little code thing on my website now where you can just click one button and it just copies all the code. Makes it very very nice. Freeze, thank you so much for the, the tip, man. Much appreciated. All 
All right, so we added that in, and now we can just do the update, and I think for the stable version of Xan mod, yeah, yeah, cancel. We can just do this guy, and we're good. So we'll do that. And I actually kind of want to, uh, well, you know what, well, for Monday's stream, we'll pimp out our bootloader. I, I do want to change my bootloader around too, because I do like to use multiple kernels, depending on the video and stuff. Oh, and on the, also another upcoming one too, you guys probably have noticed this i've kind of been tinkering around with my shell i made a fancy shell for like bash scripting but i'm using zsh now and oh my gosh i got like the best possible layout now i've i've loved this uh this new shell i have it's it's zsh using my zsh customizations and aliases but with a twist using uh p10k and i'm also using nerd fonts you know how fonts like suck on, they, I'm gonna, honestly, sucks on every, you know, Windows, Mac, and Linux, but you go into nerd fonts, and this is where I just see a squirrel, and I know we're doing a Linux install, or Linux gaming, but go to nerdfonts.com, look at this, you get fonts awesome, dev icons, weather kits, SETI UI, octacons, font Linux, material design. I mean, you get every single font you could possibly want all into one, nerdfonts.com. Not sponsored, but they're pretty awesome. I, I think they're all open source actually. So, so it'd be hard for an open source project to sponsor. But anyways, it is amazing. Nerd fonts, uh, they have a whole GitHub too, so. All right, so we got our Xan mod kernel. Um, now we're gonna just enable ACO. You know, we're gonna do ACO out of the box. I love ACO so much, we're just gonna go Vim, you know, sudo Vim etc. We're just gonna do it in the environment variable. Why not? Why not? We'll just paste that guy in there. And we'll just save that out. All right, so ACO is now enabled globally. As soon as we reboot, it'll probably show. Now we need to enable game mode. Game mode's pretty awesome. It makes sure that your, your CPU doesn't throttle or anything. So we're just gonna go through and install game mode. You can do this once that's installed there. Um, but let's see, how are we installing this? It always changes on me. All right. We'll install the dependencies here. <laughs> uh, Fedora actually has an easier time with uh, Mesa ACO because um, Glorious Eggroll uses Fedora, so he makes custom kernels with like all of it on there. But it, Fedora, Arch, all of them on you here. So whatever you're using, you can totally do. Um, was there anything else? in here all right we got pretty much all that build and install so we'll just do that so we'll build this install game mode cd into game mode and then we're gonna just get checkout 5.1 Ooh, what's the latest on this one yeah 5.1 Five, or 1.5.1 1 .1 is the latest, just making sure. Sometimes if you're ever doing anything from uh, GitHub, make sure you're looking at the versioning because sometimes they update the project but then forget to update the documentation. So that's what I was just checking real quick. Uh, pro tip. All right, build. Oh, I got lost. Where's my build? All right, it's down here. And we're gonna go get checkout. 5.1 and then we'll just bootstrap that all right so then we just go bootstrap right dot sh so that should compile everything install the user yes and we're done so game modes installed and uh you know we might actually just enable that on startup along with no 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 we'll we'll do that game by game basis but we'll actually throw it in there so now we'll do custom proton this is glorious egg rolls actually i'm using a script from uh 
termulator. Termulinator. <laughs> that's a hand. That is definitely. Maybe, maybe it's German and English. Jinglish. Mixed into one. All right. So we're going to go ahead and run this script. Um, I think we'll just grab C Proton. Let's go raw. We're going to just W get this guy, right? We're going to go back to our home directory. Just grab that. Then chmod. Make it executable. C Proton. Um, oh, did I already have a C Proton in there? Huh. I don't remember that one. Let's remove that one and let's move C Proton to C Proton. Just .sh. I was like, I might have. I don't want to use an old script. I'd rather just use the latest and greatest. All right. So from this, do you want to download and install this release? Yes. So this is just going to install. Uh, the latest and greatest glorious egg roll. This is just a script. You don't have to use this script. If you want to use the official product from glorious egg roll, which I recommend, I'm just being lazy. Glorious egg roll GitHub. And if you go proton GE dash custom, you can actually do the manual install where you actually go in here, you download the latest version, you extract it to home, dot steam dot compat tools dot d or something it, the whole whole readme is right here for the manual install i think he's making a, an automatic install he just hadn't gotten around to it yet but just download the latest release um oh for native don't ever use steam in a flat pack don't install steam and flat pack you'll regret that don't do that he should just change this section we should do a get edit and just be like don't install Steam in a flat pack. <laughs> That's just dumb. Don't do that. So anyways, you get the native right here and uh, just download the latest release, create this directory, extract it into this directory, and then restart Steam. It's done, right? But anyways, we're just gonna script all that because I'm lazy. But if not, I, I will copy this and Put that, where is that? Uh, put that in here. All right, now we need to get our latest and greatest drivers. Now we already kind of got the drivers. Uh, we already added the drivers PPA. So like if you go to AMD right here. Um, yeah, yeah. So when we go to install these drivers, it's gonna go ahead and grab the latest and greatest Mesa. If we didn't do that PPA at the very beginning, it would grab the older versions, which Linux Mint, Ubuntu, Pop! OS, they run several revisions behind. Uh, so we will be more on the bleeding edge. So this is more almost like uh, Arch users uh, have. Actually, this is even p past a lot of Arch users, unless uh, they're using Mesa-ACO-Git which would be the, the absolute bleeding edge, which is a little too bleeding edge. But this is gonna be Mesa from two days ago. So pretty darn close. Well, uh, hey, oh man, Nalian, welcome to the stream for the first time. Stream elements is going crazy. What the hell? All right, I need to take that off. <laughs> Michael, I installed Steven Flatback. I regret it. Uh, Nelania. Oh, oh, that could get dangerous. All right, uh, <laughs> let's let's. Not, I'm gonna stop trying to pronounce that name. I'm horrible with names, so don't take it personally. All right, do you want to delete installed versions? No. All right, so we have the latest. Glorious Egg Rolls Custom Proton in there. Moving on. Uh, so we got custom. Oh yeah, yeah, we're moving on to drivers. So we'll just add architecture. We'll just paste that guy in. Architecture's in. Pseudo apt update. Grab that update. 
We'll go ahead and grab Mesa for 32-bit. Toss that guy in there. And then we'll get this last one. This is Mesa Vulcan Drivers. Only applicable for those out there with, I think, was it? Ooh, R9 series of AMD in past. This is AMD's setup. If you're using NVIDIA, obviously, scroll up, use these versions. But that's all, all up to you. I'm still an AMD fanboy. Ooh, but all right. So mess is already installed. We're good to go. Drivers are installed. Custom protons installed. Uh, I think we need to go e-sync now. Oh, how to e-sync. So just see if e-sync's enabled. U limit dash HN. Um, this one is set to, oh, all right. Linux Mint team has changed things, guys. This is a development. In Linux Mint 20, uh, Linux Mint 19 did not enable eSync by default. However, the the people at the Mint team had the foresight to go ahead and enable uh, Linux Mint uh, eSync. So, uh, actually, eSync here from uh, what is this? Uh, eSync from Lutra's team says to do 524,000. Linux Mint team just went ahead and bumped this up to a million, double, which honestly. It, it, 500 is enough, but a million is definitely enough. Uh, and eSync's enabled by default on Linux Mint 20, which is great uh, for gaming. So sweet. I used to always give props to Pop! OS as they were one of the first distributions to do that. But uh, Linux Mint followed suit and said, hey, we're going to do it by default. So eSync now in Linux Mint 20 is enabled by default. Sweet. Uh, now we go to Wine Dependencies. Let's install some Wine action. We've already done the architecture. We'll grab our key here. Uh, da, da, da. And this is Linux Mint 20. Anybody's wondering. Um, so we'll grab this guy. We'll add our repository. Um, we, we are not needing any of that. We'll just do a sudo apt update again. And then we're going to grab the staging version of Wine. Let's see. Now, on uh, Linux Mint 19.3, they had some issues. Let's see if Linux Mint 20 has issues. I bet it doesn't. I, I'm, if I'm a betting man, I'm going to say this is going to work perfect. Also, Linux Mint 20 removed the crump. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm loving the Mint team. This last version of Mint 20 has been... Freaking awesome. I don't know how anybody can say anything bad about it. <laughs> oh, word star. Uh, Don, uh, I think it was uh, George R. R. Martin. Uh, uses WordStar to make all of his books. So still today in 2020, he is writing in WordStar, which if you're not familiar, WordStar is a word editor from, what is it, 1984, I wanna say? I gotta look it up now. We got it, we're installing some wine anyways. Uh, WordStar, WordStart. No, initial release was in 1978, 42 years ago, by Rob Barnaby. Hot dog. Oh my god. That is crazy. It was a Word Star 2000. All right. <laughs> Word Star 2000 came out in 1984. Does that make sense? All right. Well, anyways, sorry. <laughs> Sidetrack. All right, so we got wine installed. Uh, da, da, da. Everything looks good there. For compatibility reasons, install these additional libraries. I don't think we need to do this anymore. This is just there for legacy purposes. But let's see. Let's let's go ahead and toss it in there and see if it actually finds anything. Yeah, nah. So yeah, back in the older versions of Linux, like Ubuntu 18 or Linux Mint 19, you might needed to do this and also go track down some other dependencies. Man, I'm telling you, every version of Linux 
makes things so much easier. Like, just in the year and a half I've been doing this, I gotta say, from when I started to now, it's like, it's like the difference between 95 and Windows 10. And that's how much difference, how much they, the gap is closed in just a year and a half. It's amazing. All right. So we've done wine. Um, oh, and now we just got Lutris. Did I install Steam already too? I guess we'll install Steam after this too. So let's go ahead and grab Lutris. All right. Pseudo apt update. One more update. And then sudo apt install Lutris. We'll install that. Do I have Steam on here? Let me look. Steam. I don't think I have Steam on here. Huh. Okay. That's all right. We will fix that here in a minute. Yeah, yeah, there's some big differences between Mint 19 and 20, that's for sure. Big jumps. Uh, awesome Window Manager, M4X. Uh, you can go to my GitHub, github.com forward slash Chris Titus Tech forward slash awesome dash material. Actually, I'll just pull it up for you. This right here. This is a fork from Hikari. Uh, this branch is 22 commits ahead and 12 commits behind Hikari Master. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I forked it from Hikari. Uh, we have both been working and doing a lot of modifications to this theme. Oh my god. But Hikari was the whole reason why we did that. One of the very first uh, streams on Twitch. Hikari was like, you gotta try this, man. And he, he screenshotted his desktop. And I was like, okay, that looks that looks pretty badass. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna give it a whirl. And as soon as I did it, I was like, this is pretty good. And then now I can't even he has ruined me because I literally can't use anything else. Like I just love this so much. I go to Mac, I go to Windows, I go to another Linux distribution or desktop environment, and I'm like and I need to go back to my material theme. Like immediately, in no matter what distribution I'm on, I'm just installing the material theme with awesome window manager. And I'm just like, I, I just can't. I can't go to anything else. I just love it. Love it. Oh my God. It's so awesome. All right, enough about that. We need to install Steam, right? Um, yeah. So we'll finish this off with an install of Steam um, and install Steam. There we go. So I think uh, what we'll do from here, let's just go NeoFetch. Let's see where we're starting with. And then we're just going to give it a reboot. Right now we're on 4.4 generic. Uh, we'll switch that around to the kernel. We've also done some environmental variables to enable ACO by default. This is going to give us extra performance on our games. Esync is already enabled by default in Mint 20. And, dude, this was easy. What? That was, what, 20 minutes? I mean, hell, I could just take the chop this up from the live stream and just throw this on YouTube and say, that's how you make the most awesome Linux gaming machine in the world. Just install all these things. So let's give it a reboot. I'm gonna watch it not boot. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. You've not sent me the link to upgrade my access on stream elements. Oh, God. Let me do that real fast. Oh, wait. Never mind. My top monitor is not enabled when my regular machine's down. Yeah, I go in and kill that stupid stream elements. Scotty, how you doing, man? We just finished doing the ultimate Linux gaming setup. And I'm going to make a, a website post about this with all the links to all the projects, uh, the experience. And then, of course, after I do the, the article, we're going to make a video 
how to make the most awesome. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, that's that's not good. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Well, um, let's, uh, let's first try, uh, Control-Alt-F2. See if we can get TTY. <laughs> oh, man. I gave my whole, whole, whole thing a heart attack. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was, it would just be too easy, guys. That was too easy. I was like, 20 minutes? That was, that's not, we're not even at an hour yet. That's, that's amazing. Oh. <laughs> I done broke my system. That's new. I've never run into this error. Wow. That was new. Invalid environment. Oh. I set the ACO environment in ETC environment. Ooh, ooh, that's probably bad. Uh-uh. Uh, F2. Ah, uh, F2. Okay. Oh, wait. Did it fix itself? Okay, I didn't do anything. That was weird. That's a. Uh, <laughs> um. Okay, Peter did it in ACO, but Peter's an arch guy. Hmm. All right, maybe, maybe it was just a fluke. We did do a lot of upgrades all at once. Might need to keep an eye on this one though. Okay, yeah, yeah. ACO set in ETC environment. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what I did. I mean, I thought, hey, that's the easiest way to set ACO. Force rebuild of pins. What is the force rebuild of pins? That's weird. Huh. Well, let's mess around a little bit more and see if that rebuild of pins keeps popping up. <laughs> This isn't that type of YouTube channel, bending CPU pins. Ugh. All right. Oh, you know, I forgot to tell you guys. Check out the new prompt. You like it? This is the nerd fonts I talked about a little bit in the middle of the stream with uh, P10K. Oh man, it's it's amazing. I love this font. It is just like being in a dream a dream of a dream it's like the inception of dreams of awesomeness when it comes to the terminal nerd fonts with p10k all open source all on github it's greatness i do it on everything so if i'm on windows or mac too i, I install this it's not as pretty though it's not you can't get it quite as pretty as it looks like right here this is it's just beautiful so, all right, well, that, that does it for, for the gaming machine setup. 